From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. Hello everyone. Welcome to this month's show of 8700 on DCTV 23. I'm Rick Martin. And I'm Lena Hardy. Have you ever wanted to become the principal of your school? Members of the community received that opportunity at an event last month on October 19th called Principal for a Day. With a partnership between Douglas County School System and the Douglas County Chamber, more than 35 community volunteers gave their time to be the principal for the day this year. These volunteers visited schools within the county to receive an inside look at the current issues facing our school system. The volunteers were able to attend the school's daily assembly and interact with students and teachers. The experience is designed to provide insight into what is happening in the classrooms of our schools on a daily basis. This is an event that occurs every year, so maybe next year will be your opportunity to lead the school. October was proclaimed Behavioral Health Month by the Board of Commissioners. Lots of events were put on by the Director of External Affairs. Well, as a result, some exciting news for Douglas County. U.S. Representative David Scott issued a congressional record statement commending the people of Douglas County and the Board of Commissioners for their efforts to increase awareness about behavioral health challenges. Congressman Scott said in his statement that great work was being done. Two teachers in Douglas County have been selected as top 10 candidates for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution Celebrating Teachers Award. Jill Buchanan, special education teacher at Dorset Shoals Elementary School, and Butch Shoals, physical education teacher at Arbor Station Elementary, were both nominated by parents of their students. Ms. Buchanan and Coach Shoals have both taught within Douglas County School System for more than 20 years and have consistently made a difference in their students' lives. It is their commitment and dedication to public education that makes them both deserving of the recognition. These Douglas County educators have honored, were honored at the reception at the Cox Corporate Building in Dunwoody on October 25th and were featured in a special print section of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution on October 29th. Speaking of education, coming up next on 8700 is my interview with Douglas County School Superintendent Trent North. I'll be right back. Mr. North, thank you so much. It's a pleasure and honor having you in your first sit-down TV interview to be with us here at 8700. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. North, tell us a little bit about your background and what brings you to Douglas County School System. When I began my career in education in Carroll County, I had a passion for teaching young people. When I entered college, my goal was to be an attorney. And all I wanted to do was to make sure that those who couldn't afford to represent themselves, that they had adequate representation. The Lord had another path for me. I didn't get my paperwork completed in time, and my old high school football coach asked me to try teaching. In the first day of school, I walked into a seventh grade geography class, and I knew then my calling wasn't in the legal profession. My calling was working with young people. I started as a paraprofessional. I went from a paraprofessional to a teacher, and actually prior to being a paraprofessional, professional, I actually served as a custodian. And even though I enjoyed the quality time I spent with the custodians in the Carrollton City School System, I knew that that wasn't for me as well. I couldn't run the buffer. It kept getting away from me. Um, but as a pair pro, I enjoyed it. But as a pair pro, I realized that I could only have minimal impact on the lives of the students. So then I aspired to become a teacher. And I became a teacher. And I enjoyed it and had success at it. But once again, there was always someone stifling what I could or could not do or how I could provide help to students. And so I had to strive to go higher. And then I became an administrative assistant. And then from an administrative assistant to an assistant principal. 
from an assistant principal to a principal. I served as a principal of an alternative school that I actually started and founded. I served as a principal of an elementary school, middle school, and a high school alternative school. And then even there, and even though I had success, it wasn't enough because I could only impact the students that were in my, in my building. And so I was asked to go to the district office. And at the district office, I served as the human resource director, and I loved it. I had a chance to recruit some of the best and train and support and be there for the teachers, um, for the administrators in the community. But once again, uh, there were these impediments that I think restricted teachers and principals being able to do the best that they could. So my path started as a custodian, and currently I serve as the superintendent of Douglas County School System. I tell you, you know, you speak uh, uh, some parallels there, you know, as uh, a lawyer mm -hmm. helps to serve, you know, their clients. Um, and in terms of uh, uh, being a superintendent, you know, it's a, uh, what interested you personally to that leadership position in Douglas County? The superintendent sets the tone for the district. And in every aspect of my career, I felt like the tone need to be set so that as long as you worked hard or you tried to work hard, whether you're the student, whether you're the teacher, or the administrator, you should have that flexibility to do your work and, and to do a good job at it. So, and, so I'm sorry. No, and so as the superintendent, you there are no excuses. If the system is successful, the superintendent has established a tone where expectations are high. If it isn't, then the superintendent bears that responsibility, just as in the private sector. So tell me something, because you mentioned it and touched based on it in terms of being a good superintendent. And I think people would be happy with having a good superintendent. But based on what you're sharing with me, which is actual admirable, uh, your upbringing and the path you've taken to this role, what makes a good superintendent a great superintendent? Uh, great question. A, a good superintendent is one that leads. They, uh, a good superintendent makes they do a good job of making sure that the students get home on the on the bus safely, making sure that lunch is fed to the students and everybody receives a meal. You don't realize it, but the day to day flows naturally. Okay, and it stays the same from day to day and year to year. And they don't truly have a vision for the district. A great superintendent has a vision. And it's not something abstract that people can't see. It's not something that just sounds good, but there is a vision that can be articulated to the teachers, to the students, to the administrators, to the parents and the community. And a great superintendent has the skill set to motivate people to get behind his or her uh, vision. And that is that segues into my next question in terms of the role of the superintendent. And, you know, really it has evolved into such a complex, rapidly changing role for many school systems throughout the uh, area. What do you believe the primary role of the superintendent in Douglas County is? Oh, uh, there is no question. The, 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 the primary role of the superintendent is to serve. And that servant leadership begins with our students. There are a lot of things we do as a superintendent for making sure that we are good fiscal stewards of taxpayers' dollars, making sure that we hire the best and the most qualified teachers, and making sure that the teachers and the principals have the resources they need to be successful, and, and we are visible at different events. All those things are part of the, what a superintendent does. But the most important thing we do is to be ambassadors and uh, advocates for our students and they no one should be more of an advocate for all of our students than the superintendent 
What is it going to take to make your new agenda successful? I believe in excellence. And so a, a part of the vision that I'm bringing to Douglas County is a new concept, well not a new concept, but the idea of a standard of excellence. I have two beautiful daughters and when it comes to my children, I don't want to settle. And, and when I say I don't want to settle, I, I'm not saying that we have to be frivolous with taxpayers' dollars. And I'm not saying we give them the world. What I am saying is that they deserve the best. So when it comes to recruiting teachers once again, nothing is too good for them. When it comes to the facilities that they attend school in, nothing is too good. When it comes to our performing arts facilities, our athletic facilities, our musical facilities, they deserve the best. And I am committed, working with the awesome board that I'm fortunate to work with, to make sure that our students, that they understand what excellence looks like and how to work towards achieving that. Very well said, very well said. As a parent, Superintendent North, I can only imagine you um, are very well aware of how passionate parents are for their yes. children, for their children. Yes. What should Douglas County School students be able to know and do upon graduation? When a student graduates from Douglas County High School, they're going to choose a number of, uh, a, several paths. They're either going to go directly to work or they're going to enter into some type of technical college or college. We want them to be successful, whichever path, whichever path they choose. And we are in the process of making changes. We don't want grades 9, 10, 11, and 12 to be focused on general curriculum. We want our students to receive training that's going to allow them to enter the workforce with specific skills. So if you want to be a welder, we want to start training you on that in 10th grade. If you want to work in diesel auto mechanic, we want you to start on that in 10th grade. And we are looking to work with all of our 9th graders. We are in the process of redesigning our 9th grade academy. We want to help students understand what they are naturally good at. We want to do a better job of sharing with them all the job opportunities that are available, the skills that are required, and to begin assisting them and their parents to create a path to get them to that level. Great, great, great. In what areas do you see the biggest potential for growth in the school system? Our career um, workforce. We've, we have been designed to prepare students for college. What are some of the biggest challenges you see? You know, I, I wouldn't say that they were challenges. You know, authors write about any time you're making a change, you need to treat it as a challenge. And, and so I understand that. What we've got to do in Douglas County is begin changing the mind of our teachers and our students and our parents. There are good paying jobs in factories. Actually, some of our skilled jobs actually compensate more than our professional jobs. And we don't do a great job of explaining that to our students. I rarely meet a mom who brings their child to kindergarten and says, I want them to be working in a factory. They all want their child to be a doctor, or a lawyer, or a CEO, or some celebrity. And everybody can't be a doctor or a lawyer. Someone has to work on heating and air, which is great compensation. Someone has to be the electrician. Someone has to be the plumber. Someone has to drive the school bus. Someone has to be um, a police officer or serve in the military. And so we've got to reshape or redefine what success looks like. So that takes me into my next question. Mm -hmm. What do you think it will take for Douglas County schools to improve? Well, first, 
as a part of my vision, I want Douglas County to be a district of choice. Whether you are in the metropolitan area or the West Georgia area, when you're trying to decide where you want to purchase your home, I don't want your job to be your primary indicator. I want you to say, we're living in Douglas County because of the quality of the educational school system. And so that's my primary goal. Um, I love and I thrive on competition. No one has more fiscal resources than public, ed public education. No one knows, uh, has as many quality teachers and administrators um, as public education. We've got to articulate that and we have got to hold ourselves accountable. We will be the district of choice for this area. Well, you know, as, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'm, you know, personally, I enjoy hearing that because when I migrated, when I came down and moved from Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. um, you know, I tell you, one of the things and that was uh, uh, very attracted, uh, attractive to me was uh, Douglas County. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, at that point, I guess I moved about 12 years ago. It was growing, and it was one of the least uh, growing areas, least developed areas mm -hmm. in the Atlanta metropolitan area. And, uh, you know, with land, businesses, and people, um, you know, it was attractive. So hearing your vision, um, I think, is appealing. Uh, so given that uh, appealing situation, what are some ways you think uh, you'll be able to equip the teachers for excellence? Oh, great question. The teachers are there. They understand it. We've got to provide them the professional development time to do the work that needs to be done. We have got to show them what it looks like. The, the example I would use is when my daughters took piano lessons, I wanted them to learn how to play the piano. And I went out and purchased a keyboard. And the instructor said, now, Mr. North, do you want them to know what good sound sounds like? And I said, yes, ma'am. She says, well, if you want them to truly play, and if you want them to become engaged in it, then you owe it to them to expose them to what, I'm using my own term, excellent looks and sounds like. Well, because we, in my opinion, don't like to showcase the great things that we can do. Because if we represent excellence, sometimes the people say we're wasting money. Or if we showcase excellence, it is, there's this expectation because we are the government that we can't be about excellence. And so in our profession, we're just normal. But yet in the private sector, it's an expectation. So all I've got to do is free their mind, show them what it looks like, and they are hungry for it, and then continue to support them as they move in that direction. And I look forward to that. Look forward. And they're already excited about it, because we, it's not something I'm waiting to start, we've already started, and they're just excited. Speaking of excitement, mm -hmm. what is your favorite thing about Douglas County School System? And I know you've just, just arrived, pretty much, and, mm -hmm. and you know, you have so much uh, going on, you're probably drinking from a fire hose with so many activities. Um, but what is your favorite thing about the Douglas County School System? There, you know, there, there isn't just one. Let me just name a couple, because if I name one, I, I won't. That's fair. I, I won't do Douglas County justice. Des Douglas County has a rich history. There are people who work in the maintenance department, who they are fifth generation from working in the maintenance department. And when you meet people, they proudly tell you, I'm the class of 1998 from Lithia High School, Lithia Springs High School. Or I graduated from Douglas County. So there is this true love for the school system. That's generation after generation. And so even though there are a lot of new people in Douglas County, there are just as many diehard uh, residents of Douglas County who truly love Douglas County. And you. You, you can't ask for much better than that. So that's the first thing. 
The second thing is the current board and the prior board, they've done an awesome job of placing each school on what appears to be a campus. And so I can't wait to create that campus experience. So when you are riding by Douglas County High School, you're going to ask yourself, wow, what school is that? I would love for my child to go and visit that school. So whether it's Douglas County High School, we're in the process of staining Lithia Springs High School brick by brick. And, and I can't wait to create a campus uh, experience for Lithia Springs High School, Chapel Hill High School, um, New Manchester High School. So every campus you visit, you're going to be, you're going to feel as if you are at a Pace Academy. And so I love our campus feel. I, I love the facilities. But also, there are some awesome employee. So whether it is the tra rich tradition of Douglas County or the, the skill of those who came before me with the layout of the, the, the schools or the awesome people who work in, within the school system, they all make it an awesome, awesome place to work and do business. Well, it seems like I owe you an apology. I should not have said, what is your favorite thing, but what, is, what are your no, favorite things? No. Because uh, that uh, really uh, uh, seems quite... D D Douglas County should be very proud. I, I know they are. There are a lot of good things that are occurring in Douglas County. And sometimes, because we, don't choo we choose to not brag, or we choose to just sit back and we say, well, they know us. And there are a couple of small groups with good intention who in my opinion, are very myopic in their approach. And, and so they'll take an isolated incident and stay on it for five or 10 days. And so that becomes uh, the, the voice for the school. And that's unfair. An example would be, hypothetically, a, a child gets left by the school bus. Mm -hmm. And no one ever wants that to occur but we transport 10,000 plus kids, actually more than that. We, we transport every bit of 20,000 kids a day, twice a day. And if your batting average was, was that good, you would be a billionaire. If your accuracy as a quarterback was that good. And, and then if it wasn't our fault, we can't defend ourselves. So you get to say bad things about us. And because of our guidelines, we can't respond. And so I take pride in telling Douglas County, despite all of the rhetoric you hear, and I don't say it just because I'm an employee of Douglas County, my faith won't allow me to do that. I've traveled the state and I've worked in some of the best school systems in the state of Georgia. And Douglas County should be very proud of what it has. And Douglas County should be very excited about what's to come. Well, Superintendent North, I feel it in your heart, and I feel the pride that you have. I wish you good luck. I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much for allowing us to be your first sit-down interview uh, on TV here at 8700. Thank you, sir. You're more than welcome. Thank you for having me. Welcome back. Multiple changes are coming to Arbor Square. The old Kmart Shopping Center at the corner of Highway 5 and Douglas Boulevard will house a new home goods, a Burlington Coat Factory, and a Del Taco. The makeover of the square will be completed by Connolly Investment and Development. The finished product will look and feel like a brand new shopping center with a new exterior and interior look to fit the modern standards of the community. The parking lot will be repaved and landscaping islands will be added with trees as well. The total cost of the project is unknown at this time. A special called meeting occurred recently with the Douglas County Fire EMS Committee to discuss completing a training center storage building and to look for bids for a ladder truck to be purchased through SPLOST funds. Fire Chief Scott Spencer asked for the meeting to complete the job and get it done. Chief Spencer said completing the building will allow the department to house such equipment as trailers, trucks, and the dive boat, which belongs to the Douglas County Emergency Management Agency. 
The 18th annual Douglas County Veterans Day Lighted Parade is happening November 11th and the Communications Department is receiving entry applications. Preparations for the wonderful tradition have been moving right along. Many participants from years past are returning, such as veterans from American Legion Post 145 and Post 118 and even the Vietnam Veterans of America organization. Junior ROTC organizations from Douglas County, Alexander, and Lithia Springs High Schools have committed to coming. Every year, crowds line the streets for this event, and we hope to see you this year. Thank you for joining us here at the Douglas County Courthouse Studios. I'm Lena Hardy. And I'm Rick Martin. See you next time on 8700.